So here we are in our studio, having just completed the Mann Whitney U test on two levels of IDE, Visual Studio and Eclipse. And now we're moving to three levels, which will require that we use a one way ANOVA. So let's read in our new data file, IDE3, because it has three levels. And let's view that as we normally do. And we can see the first 20 subjects use Visual Studio, the next 20 used Eclipse, and the final 20 now used PyCharm, all with times and minutes uh, for how long it took them to write these programs in the various languages. Uh, as is our practice, we'll turn subject into a nominal or, uh, factor, and we can summarize over each of those columns here. We can see the mean time is 353 minutes for writing these programs. We can also look uh, by the three levels of IDE now with our ddplyr command, as we've done in the past. We can see means and standard deviations and other information there. Uh, remember, we're back on the time measure here, not log time, uh, as we transformed our data last time. Uh, so for now, looking at time, we can also look through our histograms. Uh, and we can see Visual Studio and Eclipse haven't changed. The histogram for PyCharm is new, and uh, there it is. We can see there were quite a few students who took between 200 and 300 minutes for these programs. And a box plot compares now all three. Looks like PyCharm might have a little edge on Visual Studio, and both look like they were faster uh, to do than Eclipse. Uh, as we did before, we'll test for normality on the result of the this time of the new level of PyCharm. Uh, and the p-value is significant, so we have a departure from normality in the response. But we should test it on the residuals, as is more proper. And so we fit our model and test the residuals, again seeing a departure. And we can see that, again, with our QQ plot. Uh, quite a departure, obviously, here on the end from normality. Uh, we can test log normality, as we did before. Uh, of the PyCharm level. We, we already did it uh, previously on Visual Studio and Eclipse. And the log normality test uh, with the KS test shows uh, that we're not statistically significant uh, in, our, in a departure from log normality. So again, as before, that gives us an indication that the PyCharm times may be log normally distributed. So let's create the, the log time column. And we'll go ahead and view that having been created just as before. Uh, the only difference from before is that we have PyCharm now as well with a log time result. And we can do the normality test on log time as the response and see that, in fact, we are now no longer significantly different from a normal distribution according to the Shapiro-Wilk test. And we can also do the same uh, test on the residuals now for log time. We can see that the departure while still present is not as severe. And we have a 0.08 result with the Shapiro-Wilk test. So it's, it's nearly a, a departure from normality, but not, not technically and not quite. So we'll proceed with some confidence there, since uh, the ANOVA is somewhat robust to mild departures anyway. We'll also do our homoscedasticity test with Levine's test, uh, the brown fourth scythe version. And we see that we're not significantly uh, uh, different there, so that means that we don't have a violation uh, with our log time result. Um, our variances are similar enough. Uh, and so now we're going to fit the actual one-way ANOVA. Uh, so we fit the model, and then we use the ANOVA command to calculate and report the ANOVA. Um, and so, again, we see the F value, this column here, is the column of particular interest. And it shows an F statistic of 8.796. And of course, the p-value is much less than 0 0.05. What that means is the overall ANOVA, or the omnibus test, as it's called, shows there is some difference among, uh, I'll go back to here, among these levels of IDE. It does not tell us exactly what the difference is nor does it tell us where exactly the difference lies in, in terms of c comparisons between each of, these t uh, uh, each of these IDEs. So we have to look further. But that first test being significant, that omnibus test, gives us permission to do what are called post hoc 
uh, tests, meaning follow-up tests that are pairwise comparisons that will tell us uh, where those differences lie. So now we can go back to an independent samples t-test, between subjects t-test, between the levels of Eclipse, PyCharm, and Visual Studio to see which two are different. And just looking at the graph, we might ask, is PyCharm different from Visual Studio? Um, because those are the ones that obviously look close together. The Eclipse level being so different is reason enough for the overall f-test to be uh, significant. We'll load in the uh, multi-comp library for multiple comparisons, and we'll run this line here. I'll explain a little bit here. The glht uh, command is doing uh, the, uh, um, the test for us, and mcp is a command for multiple comparisons. We say which factor we're testing over. Of course, we have one, IDE, with three levels. And when we say Tukey here, it's a shorthand for all the pairwise comparisons. And as we've done before, we're adjusting for multiple tests because they all by chance have a, a 1 in 20 chance of being significant. And so we adjust with home sequential Bonferroni uh, procedure, which accounts for the fact we're making multiple comparisons so we don't get an inflated chance of seeing significance where there isn't any. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And we can see uh, here are our pairwise values and the t statistic and the p value in the the right column here so pycharm versus eclipse uh, is significantly different and we can see pycharm is faster visual studio versus eclipse we found from before and that hasn't changed and then visual studio versus pycharm is a p value of 0.67 so these are not detectably different according to this test uh, just as a matter of completeness in R, I show another way that we can use the glht command, this time with the lsm command, uh, which allows us to specify that we want pairwise comparisons. This is another way of executing exactly the same results, and you may find a value. Uh, you can do a question mark mcp and a question mark lsm and read more about how exactly these are formulated. But uh, for completeness, I've run the same analysis and you can see the result there. We've just completed our analysis of IDE2 and IDE3. And we just saw our first F test on IDE3. Recall IDE had three levels, Visual Studio, Eclipse, and PyCharm. We found that both Visual Studio and PyCharm were significantly shorter in programming time needed than Eclipse, but not significantly different from each other, Visual Studio and PyCharm. So in the process, we conducted the overall or omnibus F test. I wanted to show you how that's written up. Here we have F indicating that that's the test. And now we have two different degrees of freedom. The first is called the numerator degrees of freedom, sometimes written DFN. The second is the denominator degrees of freedom, sometimes written DFD. These parameterize the F distribution that's being used here. Often the, the numerator can be thought of as being related to the number of levels here. We have three, and so we have the number of levels minus one as the numerator degrees of freedom. For simple analysis like this, that will hold. This is also the the 57 is also called the residual degrees of freedom, and that's where you'd read it in the table in your R output. Then we have the F statistic, the value produced in this particular analysis, and a P level that is less than 0.001. You'll recall the range of acceptable P values that you can report. So that's how we report a significant overall or omnibus ANOVA result for a one-way ANOVA.